U.S. Physics Olympiad Year 2017 U.S. 8 PHO Final Round That was uh, two parts for this round. First part was uh, four problems A and the second part was uh, two problems B. For each part that was given uh, 60 minutes. So if you want to see all these problems please subscribe for this uh, channel problem a1 a pair of uh, wedges are located on a horizontal surface the coefficient of friction both uh, sliding and static between the wedges is nil the coefficient of friction between the bottom wedge b and uh, the horizontal surface is nil and the angle of the wedge is uh, theta. The mass of the top wedge A is M and the mass of the bottom wedge B is uh, 2M. A horizontal force F directed to the left is applied to the bottom wedge as uh, shown in the figure. Determine the range of values for F so that the top wedge does not slip on the bottom wedge. Express your answers in terms of any of all of M, G, theta and mu. Problem A2. Consider two objects with uh, equal heat capacitance C and the initial temperatures T1 and T2. A Carnot engine is uh, run using these uh, objects as uh, it's a uh, hot and cold reservoirs until they are at equal temperatures. Assume that the temperature changes of both the hot and the cold reservoirs is very small compared to the temperature during any one cycle of the Carnot engine. Question A. Find the final temperature Tf of the two objects and the total work W done by the engine. Now consider three objects with the equal and the constant heat capacity at the initial temperatures 100 Kelvin, T2 equal 300 Kelvin and the T3 equal 300 Kelvin. Suppose we wish to raise the temperature of the third object. To do this uh, we could run a Carnot engine between the first and the second objects extracting work W. This work can then be dissipated as a heat to raise the temperature of the third object. Even better, it can be stored and uh, used to run a Carnot engine between the first and the third object in reverse, which uh, pumps heat into the third object. Assume that all work produced by running engines can be stored and used uh, without dissipation. Question B. Find the minimum temperature TL to which the first object can be lowered. Question C. Find the maximum temperature TH to which the third object can be raised. Problem A3. A ship can be thought of as a symmetric arrangement of soft iron. In the presence of an external magnetic field, the soft iron will become magnetized, creating a second weaker magnetic field. We want to examine the effect of a ship's field on the ship's compass, which will be located in the middle of the ship. Let the strength of the Earth's magnetic field near the ship be BE and the orientation of the field be horizontal pointing directly toward to north. The Earth's magnetic field BE will magnetize the ship which uh, will then create a second magnetic field BS in the vicinity of the ship's uh, compass given by this formula, where Kb and Ks are positive constants. Theta is the angle between the heading of the ship and the magnetic north. 
measure it uh, clockwise. Ports uh, B and S are unit vectors pointing in the toward the direction of the ship, bow and the uh, directly right of the forward direction starboard respectively. Because of the ship's magnetic field, the ship's compass will no longer necessarily point north. Question A. Derive an expression for the deviation of the compass delta theta from north as a function of kb, ks and theta. Question B. Assuming that kb and ks are both much smaller than 1, at what headings uh, theta will the deviation delta theta be largest? A pair of iron balls placed in the same horizontal plane as a compass but a distance d away can be used to help correct for the error caused by the induced magnetism of the ship. Just like the ship, the iron balls will become magnetic because of the Earth's field BE. As spheres, the balls will individually act like dipoles. A dipole can be thought of as the field produced by two magnetic monopoles of a strength plus minus m at two different points. The magnetic field of a single pole is B equal plus minus m multiplied by vector r divided by r square, where the positive sign is uh, for a north pole and the negative for a south pole. The dipole magnetic field is the sum of the two fields, a north pole at y equal positive a over 2, and the south pole at y equal negative a over 2, where the y axis is a horizontal and the pointing north a is a small distance much smaller than the radius of the iron balls in general a equal ki multiplied by b e where ki is a constant that depends on the size of the iron sphere on the picture a binnacle protecting the ship's compass in the center with the two soft iron spheres to help correct for errors in the compass heading. The use of the spheres was suggested by Lord Kelvin. Questions Question C. Derive an expression for the magnetic field Bi from the iron a distance D much greater than A from the center of the ball. Note that there will be a component directed radially away from the ball and the component directed tangent to a circle of radius d around the ball. So using polar coordinates is recommended. Question D. If placed directly to the right and left of the ship compass, the iron balls can be located at a distance d to cancel out the error in the magnetic heading for any angles where delta theta is largest. Assuming that uh, this is done, find the resulting expression for the combined deviation delta theta due to the ship and the balls for the magnetic heading for all angles theta. Problem A4. Relativistic particles obey the mass-energy relation. E square equal PC square plus MC square squared. The E is the relativistic energy of the particle, P is the relativistic momentum, M is the mass and the C is the speed of light. A proton with mass MP and energy EP collides head on with a photon which is uh, massless and uh, has energy Eb. The two combine and uh, form a new particle with mass m delta called delta. It is a one-dimensional collision that conserves both relativistic energy and relativistic momentum. 
Question A. Determine EP in terms of uh, ME, M delta and the EB. You may assume that EB is a uh, small. Question B. In this case, the photon energy EB is that of the cosmic background radiation, which is an electromagnetic wave with a wavelength 1.06 millimeters. Determine the energy of the photons, writing your answer in electron volts. Question C. Assuming this uh, value for EB, what is the energy of the proton in electron volts that will allow the above reaction? This sets uh, an upper limit on the energy of cosmic rays. The mass of the proton is given by MPC square equal 938 mega electron volt and the mass of the delta is given by M delta C square equal 1232 mega electron volts. On the right we have table with the, the following relationship may be useful in solving this problem. Problem B1. Suppose a domino stands upright on a table. It has height H, thickness T, width W as shown below, and mass M. The domino is free to rotate about its edges, but will not slide across the table. Question A. Suppose we give the domino a sharp horizontal impulsive push with a total momentum P. Question 1. At what height edge above the table is the impulse P required to topple the domino smallest? Question 2. What is the minimum value of a P to topple the domino? Question B. Next, imagine a long row of uh, dominoes with the equal spacing L between the nearest uh, sides of any pair of uh, adjacent dominoes, as shown above. When the domino topples, it collides with the next uh, domino in a row. Imagine this collision to be completely inelastic. What fraction of the total kinetic energy is lost in the collision? of the first domino with the second domino. Question C. After the collision, the dominoes rotate in such a way so that they always remain in contact. Assume that uh, there is no friction between the dominoes and the first domino was given the smallest possible push such that it uh, toppled. What is the minimum L such that the second domino will topple? You may work to lower non-trivial order in the angles through which the dominoes have rotated. Equivalently, you may approximate T and L much less than H. Question D. A row of uh, toppling dominoes can be Consider it to have a propagation speed of the length L plus T divided by the time between successive collisions. When the first domino is given a minimal push, just large enough to topple a start chain reaction of a toppling dominoes, the speed increases with each domino, but approaches an asymptotic speed V. Suppose there is a row of dominoes on another planet. These dominoes have the same density as the dominoes previously considered, but are twice as tall, wide and thick and placed with the spacing of a 2L between them. If this row of dominoes topples with the same asymptotic speed V previously found, what is the local gravitational acceleration on this planet? Problem B2. Bellot College has a homemade 500 
kilovolt Van der Graaff proton accelerator, designed and constructed by the students and the faculty. Accelerator DOOM, assume it is a sphere, accelerating column bending electromagnet, the accelerator DOOM, an aluminum sphere of radius A equal 0 0.5 meters is uh, charged by a rubber belt with the width W equal 10 cm that uh, moves with the speed VB equal 20 m per second. The accelerating column consists of uh, 20 metal rings separated by glass rings. The rings are connected in series with the 500 megaohm resistors. The proton beam has a current of uh, 25 microampere and uh, is accelerated through 500 kilovolt and then passes uh, through a tuning electromagnet. The electromagnet consists of a uh, wound copper pipe as a conductor. The electromagnet effectively creates a uniform field B inside a circular region of radius B equal 10 cm and zero outside that region. On the figure, doom metal rings of uh, accelerating column glass separators, electromagnet target uh, resistor chain only six of the 20 metal uh, rings and uh, resistors are shown in the figure. The fuzzy gray path is the path taken by the protons as they are accelerated from the doom through the electromagnet into the target. Question A. Assuming the doom is uh, charged uh, to 500 kV, determine the strength of the electric field at the surface of the doom. Question B. Assuming the proton beam is off, determine the time constant for the accelerating doom, the time it takes uh, for the charge on the doom to decrease to 1 over E, which is approximately equal one third of the initial value. Question C. Assuming the 25 microampere proton beam is on Determine the surface charge density that must be sprayed onto the charging belt in order to maintain a steady charge of 500 kV on the doom. Question D. The proton beam enters the electromagnet and is deflected by an angle theta equal 10 degrees. Determine the magnetic field strength. Question E. The electromagnet is uh, composed of layers of spiral wound uh, copper pipe. The pipe has in a diameter di equal 0.4 cm and the uh, outer diameter d0 equal 0.5 cm. The copper pipe is uh, wound into this uh, flat spiral that has an inner diameter di equal 20 cm and the outer diameter d0 equal 50 cm. Assuming the pipe almost touches in the spiral winding, determine the length L in one spiral. Question F. Hollow pipe is used instead of solid conductors in order to allow for cooling of the magnet. If the resistivity of copper is a rho equal 1.7 by 10 power negative 8 ohm by meter, determine the electrical resistance of one spiral. Question G. There are n equal 24 coils stacked on the top of each other. Tap water with an initial temperature of uh, Tc equal 18 degrees Celsius enters the spiral through the copper pipe to keep it uh, from 
overheating. The water exists at a temperature of a TH equal 31 degrees Celsius. The copper pipe carries a direct 45 ampere current in order to generate the necessary magnetic field. At what rate must the cooling water flow be provided to the electromagnet? Express your answer in liters per second with only one significant digit. The specific heat capacity of uh, water is uh, 4200 joules per 1 degree Celsius per kilogram. The density of water is uh, 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. Question H. The protons are fired at a target consisting of uh, fluorine atoms. Z equal 9. What is the distance of uh, closest approach to the center of the fluorine nuclear for the protons? You can assume that the fluorine does not move. 